I believe in the Lord Jesus. I believe it's the ultimate sacrifice. I believe there is no way to the Father except for Him. But can I take, can I beg your pardon for three or five minutes this morning to talk about Mohammed? Because I can't get to Michael Merton, Martin Luther King and all these guys without going through that guy as well. God wants me to remind you this morning that everything is impossible until a situation sees a level of sacrifice that it cannot withstand. The link between you shining your light to the nations. I'm saying to you this morning, there were countries and cities that relatively few years ago, nobody could believe that Islam could take until the man Muhammad raised an army that will not take no for an answer. And guess what? Either you think it's true or false, there was no sacrifice until there was revelation. So the guy started to look at his community, his environment, and he thought there needs to be change. I wanted to remember these guys that as mighty as history shows these men to be, including Jesus, who is the Savior, as mighty as they were, they were once upon a time just humans. Okay, so let's say you look at Jesus and say, well, you know, he was born by a virgin and I believe that what about Mohammed how is his religion put side by side with the one that we believe is divine a man just separated himself and began to believe and the first convert was his wife who was a Christian then his son then his cousin so you know so winning is how you convert first your dad and mom so the spark nation ideology you through patience you're possessing one community after the other do you know this one is going to change the world because it is the level of sacrifice that people have never seen before so it said arise and shine now I want to connect that shining with the instrument for it. First John chapter 3 verse 16 is a scripture you can read offhand. But let me show you this quickly. So please, Christians that are watching, I'm not trying to practice Islam and Christianity. I'm just saying, I just don't care about your stupid opinion. I'm sorry. It doesn't mean anything. Church after church people looking for breakthrough you know everybody sits in church pretending as if they love God but looking for different stuff but God says when I look down the eyes of God runs to and fro the earth but it's not looking for everybody it's looking for loyal you know what loyal means in famine and in plenty it is not well in famine and in plenty i will sing to you no in famine and in plenty i will ask you what you want and if for any reason you reveal that you want famine i'm just gonna love famine you know it doesn't bless you until you love famine you you have to love that lack and you can't love it if you don't think it is from the lord so when we claim that we love God, it's looking at your love for situation that don't look like the things you want in your life. But in the middle of it, you are saying, God, your will be done on earth. Who am I talking to this afternoon? Your will be done on earth the same way it is done in heaven. So what will John tell us? John John gives us how to take the world. John gives us how not to fear tomorrow. 
Because I really don't have a tomorrow. I only have time. Do you know that Islam is very vocal and clear? As in, it's like, it's like a fundamental requirement for you to know that the name called God is called time. Yeah, that's their religion. Time is God. So, in other words, God forbid anything bad happens to you. <laughs> if a person dies at 30, they don't say, wow, he died at a short time. He died at God. Because the concept of God himself is his time. So there is nothing like what is happening in this time in my life. So when you begin to think that, what you did was you took time and paganism. You fix your time. So why do you think this should happen in your life at this time? Because you've taken another high door, another person's time, another person's life, and you compare it with time in your life, then you bow to that person. You bow to them, meaning their time, and you neglect time in your life. So I'm a worshiper of God because in every season, I understand. I understand that it is Him. So if I know it is Him, I'm just going to worship Him. I did not say I will sing a song to Him. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search more within. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. So now they understand that timing. So imagine the kind of pressure you get in church. When people who feel they know your time walk up to you and say, so you're not married now. Listen, you are not my time. Exactly. Uh -huh. And let me tell you this. Marriage does not equate time. Marriage is just culture. It is not time. So you can get out of time by getting into your own time. Not even in this house. Nobody, no elder has the right to walk up to you and tell you what next to do in your life. Because this is what God requires of us. What is God looking for this morning, Spark Nation? Why am I preaching like this this morning? I want you to listen to me. To take the nations... God is looking for men who can sacrifice. That is why it's called given for the nation. So look at what John says. This is how we know what love is. Listen to this. I don't want to know about all the Latin name for love. Eros, uh, Pagitos, Agape. I don't want to know none of those stuff. I don't care. John tells us a clear word this morning. There is only one way. One. And if it is not this way, you can start the theology of learning about the kinds of love. So I said, let me teach you about the four kinds of love. I don't care. I don't want to know the four kinds of love. What am I going to do with that? This is how we know love. Jesus. Christ laid down his life for do, us. How do we know love? Talk to me now. This old front row is not talking, but you guys can talk to me. How do we know love now? So what I heard in church, as people advanced and they became more theological. They said, well, Jesus laid his life down so we don't have to die. But I'm like, okay, so did you cut this other part out? And what? And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So how do you shine that light? By laying down our lives. 
So what is this old church thing? Why did men take nations? In other words, there is no nation too difficult to fix. Ah. There is no country. There is no community that is too bad that cannot be fixed. The only question will be, who is willing to lay down their lives so the whole concept of arise and shine is beautiful you know there are conventions conve con con conventions programs titled arise and shine from those programs did you ever see anyone arise talk less of shine uh 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 -huh. 2020 program has come again it's titled arise does anyone arise does anyone shine because there is no arising until there is a laying down so if we want to change Africa we want to change London City the reason why there is a spark nation in London City today that has influence and relevance is because you lay down your life God is not looking for another church of titan offering it wants to see your lives laid down so my giving is the laying down oh my god it is no longer just malachi priesthood god is looking for people who can sacrifice who can put their life at stake for the sake of their brothers and sisters and that is a nation God is looking for a selfless people. How did our parents train us? They trained us to be selfish. They told us, build your life. Now we, now we try to build our lives, but the community held us down. They, we took our eyes off our community, but it is not so. In the Asian Muslim community, they built a community. They built a people. So it is easy for their sons and daughters to rise. Go and check the sons and daughter of the black man who tells you, go and build your life. We cannot rise. We are suffering. We are impoverished. But not anymore. You will change that narrative. I thought I would hear better. Amen. 